In the last uh, presentation, we discussed about the difference between character-based methods and distance-based methods, and we mm, uh, briefly visited the concepts, how the character-based methods calculate the uh, differences and then generate a phylogenetic tree. Then we talked about the, uh, the uh, evolutionary distance-based methods, how they calculate the distance, and uh, we just concluded uh, the most simplified way is that we, we generate a matrix, 2D matrix, estimating all the differences between the two sequences or the number of sequences which we are comparing, right? S but obviously, it is not a very straight away process to calculate the distance. There are always some issues or you can say some technical points which we should keep in mind when we are talking about the evolutionary distance. The most basic um, formula or the most basic concept how to calculate the distance is like if we consider that the number of sequences if they are whether it can be nucleotide or that can be a protein sequence let's say we are first talking about the distances calculating for DNA there will be a difference between calculating the distance when we are talking about DNAs and when we are talking about proteins obviously because these two are two different entities and they are have different uh, conserved uh, frequencies. So, there should be a two different formulas for calculating the evolutionary distance. But when we, we now we are talking about DNAs, so we can say that, uh, let us suppose we say that n is the total number of um, nucleotide differences between between the two sequences, right? Then N we say that L is the number of nucleotide sites, sites compared, right? Then we say that P, which is known as the Hamming distance, P is actually the distance that means that n divided by l that total number of difference divided by total number of site compared equals to p that is called the hamming distance and this is the you can say a simp most simplified way of calculating the evolutionary distance n is the total number of differences divided by number of sites compared and uh, this formula clearly shows that n is uh, p actually is normalized by L because if the it does not increase with L if the number of sites comparison number of compare site for comparison is increasing does not mean that P will also increase yes. But one drawback with this simple method is that uh, if we are talking about the evolutionary distance how can we actually estimate the actual distance because this is this is the observed number of changes right because we are comparing two three four five some set of sequences and we are just as calculating the total number of sites compared and then the observed number of changes and there we are saying that okay if there is a, for instance if there is a difference of 10 nucleotides between the two sequences then we are saying that there is a uh, difference of 10 10 right but this is the observed number of changes what about the actual number of changes the actual number of changes is always different than the total number of changes because uh, there if we say that if at particular point when we are comparing between uh, let's suppose we are comparing human versus fish and at a specific site we identified that instead of having uh, for example if we write here to make it uh, simpler for you let's make it right here. for example we are comparing here human right human 
there is a sequence, this is just an example A, T, C, A, C, C, G, A, right? And then there is a fish or zebra fish to be specific. A, T, C, 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 G, G, A, right? Now, this is almost identical, but there are few sides which are different. Now, at this point, there is a difference of between between uh, human and zebra fish, right? And at this point, there is a mismatch. Instead of C, there is A in uh, humans and instead of G, at this point, there is a C in human. So, this is actually the observed number of difference. So, we can say that there is a difference between if the total length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this is the observed number of total number of sides compared, right? And observed number of differences are 2. So, p equals 2, 2 divided by 10, where n is the difference and t is the size. So, we say that it's the point 0.2 uh, difference. But how can we be so sure that the c is converted into a. There is a possibility that any specific point of time, for example, when we are going from human to zebra fish, we know there is a difference of 450 million years dis distance, time difference, right? So, between zebra fish and human, there are a lot of different species which arose, for instance, from tetrapods and mammals, then uh, different rodents and then uh, primates and then eventually human. So, if there is a possibility that at this point of time, C has been changed into G and then G into then T and then T into then A. There is a possibility, right? So, how to calculate this difference? This is actually a question. So, that you can say that this is the, there is uh, always uh, hidden changes which are not observed when we are compa comparing the observed number of changes. So, that is why we say that, so it means that the true, uh, sorry the writing is too poor, true, true distance, evolutionary distance is always greater than or equal to the p, that is observed uh, sorry, 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 let, let's be quick and make it neat no, not to trying to it is the uh, observed changes so, the true evolution distance is always greater than equal to the true change. So, it means that we, ha we have to, there must be some methods to calculate the true distance, to calculate the hi hidden changes, you can say hidden changes. There must be some methods. So, if we want to compare that it means we uh, not only we have to calculate the over, overall number of observed changes, but also we have to estimate the number of side substitutions, substitutions or changes at each site, nucleotide site, like I, we, uh, we just uh, showed here this one like this that each side there can be different changes. So, we have to calculate that as well if we want to be more accurate to identify the true evolutionary distance. So, the formula may change into from that p to uh, the true evolutionary distance and we say k for instance equals to s by l where s is the number of substitutions per site, right. So, there are now, different methods to how to calculate the 
distances uh, and the number of substitutions per site. Then there are a lot of different uh, uh, formulas and there are a lot of different theorems which have been published and if you use different phylogenetic tools, we will uh, dis demonstrate uh, one example of any phylogenetic uh, tree, uh, tool and then we will build a tree. But uh, before going into that, you should know that there are a lot of different uh, methods to calculate the actual or accurate number of changes between the tree. But here we are just going to the concept, so now you know what is the meaning of observed number of changes, then what is the meaning of actual number of changes and how to calculate the hidden changes. Now let's take the two simplest examples to uh, understand what are actually the, you can say that uh, what are different methods to calculate the uh, hidden changes. For the, so, taking examples, let's take the most simplest of one first. That is, Jukes and Cantor method, distance method, right? These are the two scientists. They they demonstrated that there is an equal possibility of based on based on the properties or we can say there are four different nucleotides A, T, C, G, right? And then there is according to this um, Jukes Cantor method, there is an equal possibility of conversion of A to C or C to G or G to T and same is for T to C, T to G, right? And all the all the nucleotides have equal probability of of conversion substitution at each site and it means that there can be any any, any nucleotide at any position uh, it, irrespective of the properties for example you have now here we know that adenine and guanine if adenine is changed into guanine or cytosine is changed to thiamine, then it is a transition, right? We know that there are transitions and transversions. This is transition, these are transversion. Here, that is transversion, right? So, there is an equal possibility. So, according to this, it says that in this model, the rate of substitution for each nucleotide is equally a 3 alpha per unit time and the rate of substitution of of the three possible directions of change is alpha. So, at any position it can go to any of the three alpha for example, A can be converted into G, can be converted into T or can be converted into C. So, that is the basic concept of uh, Jukes Cantor method. There is another method, its name is uh, 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 it's um, uh, taking uh, continuing into this concept of Jukes Cantor. There was one uh, another scientist, Kimura, as the name indicates, Kimura. He can be Chinese, right? So we say that uh, Kimura is a has a two parameter model. And uh, uh, Kimura is, has a two uh, show, uh, explained the two parameter model, and Jukes Cantor can you can say that is the one parameter model that one one um, any nucleotide can change to any other nucleotide at any specific time at any specific site. But for Kimura, they, it's uh, this model says no that the this transitions and transversions. I have separately different importance. For example, if transitions should occur more frequently compared to the transversions, which is very much realistic. And uh, Kimura model, uh, Jukes and Cantor model looks a bit more uh, unrealistic because uh, the Jukes Cantor says that there is equal possibility of all three uh, nucleotides, which cannot be possible because at any specific time type. The trans trans as we know from today that transitions are more frequent at a site compared to the transversions. So, it takes the Kimura takes separately 
trans transversions uh, in separately into count compared to uh, transversions, right? So there are specific formulas for that. We we may not go into the details into the formulas. If you want to know more about the uh, the details of the formulas, then you can uh, we can have the uh, we can discuss that in the discussion part of our lecture series and uh, kindly go through all the PPTs which I shared with you so that we can be equipped for with the with the basic concept. So now, in conclusion, we have studied uh, different um, concepts. For example, starting from character-based methods that and then moving into the maximum parsimony concept and then distance based methods and then calculating the two different types of evolutionary distances. And there are a couple of examples. Now uh, we will take another uh, example of uh, uh, how to build a matrix using these uh, after calculating the evolutionary distance, how we calculate uh, and build a matrix and from that matrix we generate a phylogenetic tree. So that we will discuss in our next presentation, uh, first go through all these basic concepts and then we will uh, jump into that uh, tree building techniques. Hope all of you are fine. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.